I am very excited to share with you some information about a new initiative um, that we are launching called the Stanford Carbon Removal Initiative. This is actually the first initiative um, at uh, Stanford that is jointly developed uh, by the Precourt Institute for Energy and the Woods Institute for the Environment. And we're using learnings from this workshop, as well as the sister workshop that we held last September on natural climate solutions to help shape the initiative and focus um, future research activities at Stanford. So this slide uh, shows the four faculty directors of the initiative, and you probably recognize them all as they've played key roles in the uh, workshop over the last three days. Uh, Yi Shui, the director of Precourt, has also been instrumental. Um, and I'd also like to note that we have socialized the initiative with over 25 faculty at Stanford, and there's very broad uh, support for our plans. So um, why do we wanna do this? Well, anyone sitting through the last three days, I'm sure sees, sees the need for uh, more work in the area of carbon removal. As of 2019, 77% of the world's countries uh, were not on track to meet their Paris targets for carbon reduction. And although many national and local governments um, and even many corporations have adopted these zero emission targets, the pathways, as we've been discussing, to achieve them are still unclear. So to achieve gigaton scale solutions, um, it's really important to consider research and development in a holistic way. One that looks at the interplay of global energy systems, atmospheric concentrations, the carbon cycle, and then bridges fundamental science with systems engineering. So the four faculty directors and I have um, developed the uh, vision and mission as shown on this slide uh, for the Stanford Carbon Removal Initiative. And I'd like to emphasize the last statement in, this, um, in the mission. This initiative goes beyond just science and technology and will include a focus on social acceptance, equity and environmental, economic and social costs. This initiative has five focus areas outlined on this slide. First two on the list are gonna form what we're gonna call flagship projects, which we hope to commence first. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on them in the next couple slides. The uh, third focus area, carbon uses and disposition, is something that we're already heavily involved in at Stanford through the Stanford Center for Carbon Storage and SunCat. The Stanford Carbon Removal Initiative will interface with those existing programs and not attempt to duplicate anything, but may, may perhaps fill in some gaps. The fourth focus area, which will come a little bit later, focuses on developing an interactive, dynamic, up-to-date um, platform or model or catalog. The pet term we're using is roadmap that contains information on different carbon removal technologies, including technical maturity, scale, costs, permanence, and barriers to deployment. It's anticipated that such a model roadmap will be used to assess trade-offs and consequences of different carbon removal alternatives. And then the goal of the fifth focus area is to assess the socioeconomic impacts of carbon removal projects on local communities, including things like jobs and air quality, and to educate communities to better understand the benefits and risks of such projects. So as I mentioned, um, we're gonna um, run the initiative with the concept of flagship projects and eventually all five focus areas shown on the previous slide. And what we mean by flagship is shown in the bullets uh, in this slide, multi-year, multi-PI, multiple sub-projects and whole new areas of pursuit. The initial flagship projects we plan to commence will be in the areas of atmospheric restoration and natural climate solutions. So what specifically do we have in mind? Well, with respect to atmospheric restoration, our ultimate goal is to build prototypes and eventually actually a test facility so that researchers can test out different concepts and techniques for engineered solutions for carbon removal. The pollutants of interest are carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. And you can see from the words on the slide that there's a very heavy focus on life cycle costs and getting them into affordable ranges. More specifically, with respect to methane, potential classes of technologies we're interested in exploring are photocatalysts, metal catalysts associated with zeolites and porous polymer networks, and biological methane removal. For each of these, research is needed to estimate the cost and technological efficiency, scaling, and energy requirements, 
social barriers to deployment, and co-benefits and potential negative byproducts. With respect to CO2 removal, assessments of novel techniques for industrial or geologic removal, reliant on organic materials, mineralization, and others are of interest. And finally, with respect to nitrous oxide removal, it's wide open space here. Um, anything innovative is potentially of interest to the initiative. Some of the most attractive options for long-term carbon removal are in the area of natural climate solutions or hybrids between um, natural and engineered solutions. In many settings, natural climate solutions provide a compelling mix of affordability, technical readiness, and co-benefits that range from improved habitat and soil fertility to support for rural economies. Natural climate solutions, though, um, however, also face a wide range of challenges and uncertainties. These range from questions about whether additional carbon stores are real and permanent to concerns about competition for land and water resources that might better be allocated to food security or biodiversity conservation. Some of the projects we have in mind for this flagship project are listed in the sub bullets. The go forward plan is to form a membership based affiliates program. Stanford has many affiliates programs. Many of you may be familiar with Bits and Watts, Storage X, the Natural Gas Initiative, and of course, the Stanford Center for Carbon Storage. Our goal is to form another one with another different focus. Affiliate programs provide a mechanism for multiple faculty and multiple companies to discuss and explore broad research topics. In these programs, Stanford faculty and students can learn about industry perspectives and priorities and corporate members are exposed to new ideas and research directions. Some of the benefits of affiliate membership are listed above in this slide. And workshops like this are one example of a benefit of membership, as are uh, things like early exposure to research findings and the opportunity to discuss new and exciting ideas and to help shape future research directions. We're seeking memberships, members, and you can see the multiple membership tiers that are available and yearly dues that are associated with each level of membership. Finally, what does success look like? Our goal is to have a portfolio of projects, what we're calling flagship projects, that will each explore different R&D approaches in parallel. In five years, we hope we've identified solutions that won't work, as well as obviously some that do, and are also scal scalable to the gigaton level. Ultimately, we'd like to have a toolbox that one can use to assess technology impacts and options. In 10 to 20 years, we had better be deploying these technologies at scale and monitoring and evaluating them on real projects to assess their performance. And hopefully, if we're wildly successful, this initiative will no, no longer be needed. If you have any questions or would like any more information, or if you're interested in joining, please contact me at the email listed on this slide.